good morning students uh, good morning students in today's class we'll discuss uh, molecular weight theory right uh, as you know that in the fer ferromagnetic material possess uh, the internal uh, magnetic field we just call that internal magnetic field as the uh, weight molecular field so uh, in, we just uh, start our today's topic uh, with this uh, important uh, weight weight molecular theory we are dealing with weight molecular theory so what is weight molecular theory the important aspect here the spontaneous magnetization the spontaneous magnetization spontaneous magnetization the spontaneous magnetization of a ferromagnetic material of a ferro of a ferro magnetic material magnetic material the spontaneous magnetization of a ferromagnetic material is said to be the Uh, molecular theory internal magnetic molecular theory so what the wies has done is that wies is the name of the scientist so he proposed that wies assumed that here wies is assuming assumed that there exist wies assumed that wies assumed that so he assumed that there exist an internal molecular field that there exist there exist internal molecular field internal molecular field so molecular field is existing uh, right uh, how it is existing it is existing Uh, or we can say that the existence of intermolecular field uh, on the dipole on the dipole so here uh, we just uh, start our today's topic with this uh, assumption of uh, wies uh, now according to this uh, he has given us the information right so now uh, he has given us the information right the resistance of the uh, internal uh, molecular field right so the internal molecular field is uh, it is known as wies molecular field now now uh, what is actually this uh, uh, internal magnetic field we just see this uh, now you are aware that uh, the uh, h here ex is equal to the internal magnetic field is a combination of the external applied field and also the magnetization lambda m the so this is what you need to remember that here this is equation number 1 the hex is equal to h plus lambda m now uh, what is h here how will i can obtain the value of it h? h is equal to h ex minus lambda m now this is also considered to be the equation number 1 now uh, since we has assumed hex is equal to h plus lambda m this is equation number 1 so h can be written as hex minus lambda m now what we actually we are doing is that what is actually lambda here so lambda is nothing but it is the we's constant we has given us the information right so lambda can be considered as his constant that is v is constant and h is uh, the applied external field or applied field h is here h is applied field so this thing that we need to remember we just started uh, the spontaneous magnetization of ferromagnetic material uh, is nothing but we just say that is called internal mag molecular field which is existing on the dipole of ferromagnetic material so hex is equal to h plus lambda m given by v so instead of h what you can write 
H can be also rewritten as H X minus lambda M. That is equation number one. Lambda is V is constant. H is the applied field. So now what we are doing here is that so the if in a ferromagnetic material, let us consider that the ferromagnetic material uh, obeys the whole Curie law. So what is that Curie law? So in a ferromagnet, in a uh, ferromagnet, you can see in a ferromagnet. In a ferromagnet, the Curie V's law, the Curie V's law. So in a ferromagnet, Curie V's law holds good. We can just say that this is Curie V's law holds good in a ferromagnet. So in a ferromagnet, Curie V's law holds good, right? Right, right, right. So we are just going uh, towards the mm, very basic uh, derivation of uh, V's molecular theory. So uh, that is given by uh, the uh, M. You are aware that uh, eta is equal to M by H E X. Now E X Y I what I have written here. Uh, uh, eta is equal to M H E X suffix. That is H E X is the uh, molecular field exchange molecular field and and also and also uh, eta is equal to c by t this is what curie law this is what your yeah? curie law right you can just remember this is we are talking about curie law so this is a uh, this is also equal to eta and this is also equal to eta you can just compare these equations comparing equation one and two you can just write m h e x is equal to c by t right so what you can write here H E X. We want what is the value of H E X. H E X is equal to uh, M T by C. Clear everybody? M T by C. H E X value we got M T X by C. Employees, we just substitute this uh, H E X value in our equation number one. So from equation one, from equation one, what I can write here? The equation one is nothing but h is equal to h e x right minus lambda m right you are aware of the fact this so h is equal to uh, h e x is what uh, m t by c m t by c minus lambda m clear everybody now this be can be written as m t minus c lambda taking LCM by C, clear? So now what you can do, you can just take a M common here. So what you can do, T minus C lambda uh, by C, clear? So we have just taken this value of uh, H, what we got uh, M, M by M into T minus C lambda by C. Now, uh, instead of that, what you can get M value can also be rewritten as, so I, from here equation, by I can get the value of M also. So this is equal to, M is equal to H C by, uh, what you can write? M by T minus C lambda, clear? Now this uh, employs, what you can write it, eta is nothing but, eta value is what? Eta is uh, what? M by H E, you are having uh, eta is equal to uh, what you can write here. Mm. Now, eta is m value we got CH by m into T minus C lambda. So, uh, eta is equal to m by H. Eta is equal to m by H. So, m is what? H C, m C, you can just see. m is what? H C by m into t minus c lambda into this is h right so this h and this h get cancelled so what is that eta will be equal to eta will be equal to c by m into uh, m into so what you can write uh, uh -huh. mn is, is also so here uh, you can just remember that uh, uh, m by h value we got so this CH by T minus C lambda. So here uh, you can uh, write, rewrite this as uh, 
uh, eta is equal to m by h. So what you will get is here, uh, you will get this value eta is equal to from here see we got the value of m m is ch by t minus c lambda m is equal to uh, okay m, m we have taken common here so we just write this uh, this statement right m will not come here so this is what uh, we got here so what, what it will be uh, c by uh, t minus c lambda this value will be uh, t minus c lambda clear everybody this was the mistake which has been done so in, here there will be no m because m we have taken common here so only one m is there so uh, that is what we can write eta is equal to c by t minus tc so i have written instead of c lambda i have written as tc you can just see right here since tc is nothing but i have written the instead of value of uh, c lambda I have taken written it as c now this is uh, the uh, what you can say molecular v's equation so the molecular v equation say e is equal to eta is equal to c by t minus tc so here we just again i will start this uh, the spontaneous magnetization of ferromagnetic material uh, the, in which the v's assume that there exists an internal molecular field on the dipole of the ferromagnetic material so we got this equation right we got this value uh, this is what hex is equal to h plus lambda m that is equation number one h is equal to hex minus lambda m uh, that is equation number one again we can just we have written rewritten this value of h here now where lambda is v is constant and h is the applied field so in a ferromagnet curie v is the holes could eta is equal to m by h ax i can write so and also eta is equal to c by t that is curie law uh, we have seen in the classification of magnetic materials so this is also equal to eta and this is also equal to eta so eta so we can re rewrite this particular terms as m h e x is equal to c by t so h e x is equal to uh, h e x value will obtain which is equal to m t by c you can just see this i have just rewritten this particular equation a relation from equation one so what is this is equation one it's now i got the value of hex we got the value of hex so we just substitute in the equation number one we get h is equal to hex minus lambda m now h is equal to now h is equal to instead of hex what i can write we can just write hex nothing but mt by c i've written mt by c here minus lambda m now which is equal to mt minus c lambda m by c so employees m take common m into t minus c lambda by c so h is equal to m into t minus c by c lambda by c and m can be rewritten as h c by t minus c lambda eta is equal to m by h we have uh, known to this fact this eta is equal to m by h so uh, now we just substituted uh, the value of uh, the m so as we got m value is h c by t minus c lambda so here we got this uh, hh get cancelled c by eta is equal to c by t minus c lambda instead of c lambda we can just write it as tc that is called curie temperature so c lambda can be rewritten as tc that is called curie v's law so now this is uh, what uh, uh, you can uh, uh, get the value of uh, curie v's law that is eta is equal to c by t minus tc this is one way of uh, deriving the thing so next uh, topic is very very important uh, we just uh, start our next topic so the next topic that we are actually uh, dealing with is the um, what you can say okay now uh, let's see this is what we got uh, now so now we are dealing with this particular topic of uh, hysteresis, right? Hysteresis in the uh, domain, hysteresis in ferromagnetic material. In the last class, we discussed about domain theory. Domain is nothing but uh, the amount of uh, region in which the magnetic uh, dipoles are existing. So we just scale that is, we call such regions as the magnetic uh, domains, right? So in a ferromagnetic material, just now we discussed that there exists a spontaneous magnetization and V's, with the help of the V's, uh, 
we got the information right this uh, internal molecular th field which is existing inside the ferromagnetic material uh, is nothing but it is related by a mathematical relation eta is equal to c by t minus tc where tc is the curie temperature now this is relation this relation we obtained just now now uh, due to this spontaneous magnetization, a ferromagnetic material is exhibiting a special property that is called hysteresis curve. So that hysteresis curve we actually we are dealing with here. So hysteresis curve is nothing but uh, it is a lagging of the uh, what you can say the lagging of magnetization uh, or with respect to the applied magnetic field. So hysteresis or BH curve uh, we say that. Uh, we just uh, draw uh, a graph between the applied external applied field to a ferromagnetic material is taken on the x axis that is denoted by h here and the flux density or we just say that is called magnetization we have taken in the y axis so what is happening if i increase the value of h uh, what is the effect uh, occurring on the ferromagnetic material what is that induced magnetization uh, is going to? Is it increasing or decreasing? We just see there uh, this particular uh, value of the relationship between B and H is said to be the hysteresis curve. That that BH curve can be uh, shown to you. See here, we can just see this here in this particular uh, figure. Uh, as I am increasing the value of H, B is also increasing and this re, this is uh, as the h value is increasing further b is also increasing and reaching at point uh, here so this point is known as a point and uh, further at this particular value of a if i increase h also the value of b is remaining constant so at that particular position we just call such a point as a saturation point uh, so this is called saturation uh, region where as I'm increasing the value of H, the B value is remaining constant. So this is uh, about the saturation point and this saturation point is given by small a. So now what is happening if I just uh, make this H as zero, so it should, uh, the B value is also slowly should reach the uh, original uh, position or the origin, but the B value is not exactly coming it is not retracing this particular path it is taking a different path here there exists in a ferromagnetic material this is a special property there is a residual magnetism which is existed inside the ferromagnetic material which has been shown with this particular graph here from a to b you will find that there is an existence of the uh, remanence or retentivity we call, call the such, such point here, point B is said to be retentivity or remanence uh, magnetization or, residu or residual magnetization, which means that there is an existence of the magnetic field even in the absence of magnetizing force H. So we just call this uh, point AB as the retentivity, retentivity value. And also this is called as residual magnetization and also it is again called as a remanence, uh, remanence field. So the remanence field, now what is happening is that we want to make this uh, B value zero since H has also become zero here, so B should also be zero. Now it is, uh, it, is as, it is found that the B value in order to make this B capital B flux density value zero, we should apply a force, right? That force, the application of the force applied magnetizing force in the opposite direction since it has been reached to the opposite we can just see the graph now this is the graph in which this particular portion come under the negative axis of x and y axis so here we need to apply the magnetizing force in the opposite direction so the amount of field which is required to make this residual magnetism to uh, come to zero is known as coercive field. Now, if I increase this uh, H value further, now it is tracing the path from B to uh, C to D. And again, at this point, D is a saturation which has been occurred at here, the saturation point. Now, this is A and D resembles the same, but the direction of the of them is uh, quite opposite. Now, again, uh, this, this particular uh, 
uh, curve will follow this particular part D, E, E, F, and uh, F, A. The same uh, path which has been followed by A, B, C, D. Again, the same path is retraces, that is D, E, F, A. So the, whatever the curve you are observing, this curve is said to be the hysteresis curve. And depending upon this value of hysteresis of ferromagnetic material, there are few ferromagnetic materials which are exhibiting this property and uh, maximum ferro ferromagnetic material exhibiting this uh, special property of hysteresis. And the, if the hysteresis uh, area is, uh, so you can just see this, uh, you, as I increase the H value, M is also increasing and reaching the saturation. And again, there is a residual magnetization that we call that as saturation remanent magnetization. So here, it is in order to reduce this value, we are applying a coercive force to make this uh, magnetization back to zero. And this, it retraces this particular path. And we say that is called the hysteresis curve, which is exists, uh, existed in the um, ferromagnetic material. You can just see that each and every part of the ferromagnetic material has been explained and what is the uh, what is happening to the magnetic dipoles when uh, the h is increased and m is also increasing and reaching the saturation point you can just see this is the uh, magnetic movements uh, schematic diagram wherein you can just see that uh, there is the existence of the uh, saturation of the alignment of uh, different domains in a particular direction and this is the uh, amount of uh, residual magnetization and here also you can just see that the magnetic uh, dipoles which are existing in the opposite direction take a different path here and uh, when you when it is reaching to the saturation point in the opposite direction the magnetic dipoles are uh, looking in this particular fashion now uh, again I, again it is retracing this particular path so the there is a, a different uh, motion a movement of the magnetic dipoles as you have seen here. The hysteresis loop shows the history uh, dependent nature of the magnetization of ferromagnetic material. One can say that the hysteresis loop uh, play a vital role in understanding the uh, different, uh, uh, what you can say, classification of the ferromagnetic material into hard magnetic material and the soft magnetic material. So here, if the hysteresis loop area is uh, somewhat uh, uh, what you can say large so it is said to be the ferromagnetic material is said to be hard magnetic material if this if the if, uh, hysteresis loop area is small you can just say that is called uh, come under the category of soft magnetic field you can just see this is the uh, different classifications of hard magnetic materials and soft magnetic materials wherein you can just see that if the hysteresis area of a ferromagnetic material is large it will come under the category of hard magnetic material if it is low so, or less you can just say that is called soft magnetic material the coercivity and the retentivity value of the hard magnetic material will definitely be large when compared with the soft magnetic material there are there the coercivity and retentivity value is small and the hard magnetic material cannot be easily can be easily magnetized and demagnetized wherein the soft magnetic material can be see it can a hard magnetic material cannot be easily magnetized and demagnetized where in the case of soft magnetic material you will find that they can be easily magnetized and demagnetized they have, they are also having the smallest value of permeability and susceptibility in the case of hard magnetic material and in the, in the case of soft magnetic material you'll find that the large values of susceptibility and permeability so they what, what is the use of studying all this classification because the hard magnetic material are used to make the permanent magnets and the soft magnetic materials are used to make some electromagnetic electromagnets which are used for various uh, in various machines and various devices uh, uh, so for the in day to, in day to day life application so the examples of hard magnetic material you can just see iron nickel aluminum uh, alloys right and copper nickel iron alloys they, they, they will come under the category of hard magnetic material where in the case of the soft magnetic material iron silicon alloys ferrous nickel alloys and ferrites and gar garnets come under the category of soft magnetic material so with this uh, we can just say that uh, we just uh, stop our today's uh, uh, topic uh, and uh, now just now we just have this uh, so 
with this i just uh, try to stop here so the next class we'll meet again in the next class uh, thank you everyone thank you for your patience